All right, we've created our rubric using the outcomes that we made before. And now I'd like you to see uh, one other quick tip before we jump into SpeedGrader. And that's that if we go back to the outcomes page, in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a place where it says manage rubrics. So clicking on that will show me any rubrics I've made for this class. So you can see the ones I've used already, the discussion rubric, embedding content. And this is also a place where you can create a, a rubric. You don't have to make it from the assignment page. But what we're gonna do now is jump over to grades. And the assignment that we made the last rubric for was uh, part one of our assignment. And so what I can do here is either click this tiny little drop down and choose speed grader, or if I'm looking at a specific student's um, I can click on there and also go directly to SpeedGrader. But I've got SpeedGrader open right here, and the first student to come up is Vlai. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, Christensen, and I'm using this one because it's perfect. And this is an example of how I can grade very quickly in SpeedGrader, just going over here and clicking on View Rubric. And what we have now is the same rubric we created earlier, where I can put in little comments over here on the right. And if you notice when I mouse my or move my mouse over top of one of these boxes, it lights up. So I can glance at the page and see that it does have a content page as the home page, that there are images inserted, that there are links, and it's all set. And it was turned on, turned in on time, so I'll just do that really quickly. Boom, boom, boom. If I need to change something later, I can just go in there again and move it around. And as soon as I click Save, you'll see that she got a complete um, score and a 10 out of 10, and it shows the assessment by me. Since I set up peer reviews, I can also look at the other students who have graded this, but mine is what will go into the grade book, and then if I need to add some comments down here, I will. I can also attach files, add a video comment, or just uh, do speech recognition. And I'm not really good at typing, so I'll turn that on real quick and say record. This is a great homepage. I really like the way you have the course overview with a bulleted list and the images are tucked in there nicely with links to the modules, period. I wonder if you used a table to make this, question mark. And so there's my comment. I say submit comment and that's all graded. So you can see that it's very nice and fast to just go through. Um, you can do it quickly, um, which gives the student, you know, timely feedback, but you can also give some good quality feedback and even leave comments on each item. Now that that's all done, this is what's really cool. When I go to gradebook, I can turn on the learning mastery gradebook. Notice here in the regular gradebook that we see the columns are populated by projects, but in Learning Mastery, the columns are, pro are populated by skills. Now, I've only graded one person, so you can see that they're all green going across, and up here is the course average. But this is nice to be able to mouse over one of these scores and be able to see kind of a report. That way, as a teacher, I can quickly look and see which skills do I need to reteach or which students do I need to reteach. So uh, thank you very much for letting me use your uh, course, Ms. Christensen, and your, your, I'm sorry, your homepage. Um, but as we get further into this class, maybe I can come back and what I'll do then is blur out all of the names and be able to um, show you what everyone's looking like across the different skills. Okay, if you have any questions, once again, email me at michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, at uen.org or send me a note in Canvas. I hope you're having fun using the Learning Mastery Gradebook rubrics and outcomes.